Our next presentation is from Alan Newman, Cars as Sculpture. Alan. Thanks, Chris. Um, as an early teen coming of age in the 50s and early 60s, there wasn't a lot that got through to me emotionally. The hormones were running rampant, and the really two things I cared about were cars and girls. I understood cars a lot better, and that really started my appreciation of cars. Um, since art really evokes emotion, I'm here to share some of the cars that did and continue to evoke a wide range of emotions with me in the hopes that as you go back in the world and as you travel around and you see some of these rolling sculptures, you'll learn to appreciate them. Hit it. So this is the first slide because this is the first, this is the first group that really got to me. Um, Studebaker was a really little independent company and they were turning out cars like nothing else. You gotta remember, this is 1954, I think. 54, they were turning out that car. That was like nothing else on the road. I first saw it, my eyes just popped out of my head. And that was the beginning of the Big Fin series. This car here, um, I had a counselor in camp in 1958, 59, uh, 59 and I just, fell in love with the, the fins on this car. And every time I saw this car, it reminded me I was in a spaceship and we would travel into town cruising. Um, this one here I put in because of the, 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 the grill. You know, the grills to me are fascinating. They're kind of like the logo for a company. And this is really the first time I saw a company put a grill on that was totally unique, distinctive, and really set off the car. And notice the fins. The fins are still there. I had a bunch of friends when I was in, um, growing up, and we all had cars. Um, one of my friends' father owned a gas station, and we used to gather there to fix cars on Sundays because the gas station was closed. This was his car. And when the 63 split-window Corvette came out, it was mind-boggling. It led to the, the paying more attention to the sports cars. This, Jaguar was uh, 140, which was in the middle of the 120 and the 150, you probably don't know this, but you're starting to see the UK look of the 50s and 60s with the short back and the long hood, and you're gonna see this was my all-time favorite. I always thought that having a late 50s, early 60s Rolls Royce to get around on a cold winter night, that's the way to travel. But I just love the way they continued with the same look. All their cars in the late 50s and early 60s had that same long, long front, nice sharp back. This is an Austin Healey 3000. This is a Mark III, not a Mark I, not a Mark II, but a Mark III. This actually had roll-up windows and everything. It was really kind of a cool car. But what, the reason this is here, aside from the fact that I love it, we used to ride up, we used to go, um, go out for dates on Friday night and then at, at uh, two o'clock in the morning we'd meet and we'd ride up to Mayapak, New York and I would drive. This was another friend and this is the car that blew my mind away when it came out. This was the car that was on every uh, college dorm window uh, wall. Uh, it's a Jaguar XKE and I learned to drag race on Mad Meadowbrook Parkway in this car. Um, now we come to, you're looking at the Volkswagen Bug. Now, why is this sculpture, you might be saying? Why is this art? Well, number one, it's been around for over 50 years. It's basically unchanged. The look of, this was the people's car created by Adolf Hitler for all of his people, but the shape of it was incredible. Um, and you'll see that shape is not totally different on the 190 SL, the Mercedes. This was the everyman version of the 300 SL. I always wanted a 300 SL, but I couldn't afford it. I actually think the proportions on this are even better. And it's absolutely a stunning car um, that is still around. I put these two here so you can see the old and the new. Um, BMW back in the, in the 50s um, made this 507, which is the top picture. It was a spectacular car, incredible performance for the day, just really beautiful. And then they came out, they decided to redo it in 2010 with the Z8, nowhere near as good, but much better performance. Um, the, the Lamborghini Miura, uh, this was on more college dorm walls than any other car in the world. Um, it, it, was, it, it just blew the world away when it came out back in, uh, in the 60s. 
and remains fabulous today. This is my second favorite Ferrari. Um, it came in a short wheel and a long wheel version. Ferraris, in my mind, they sing like opera singers. The sound gets into my brain and it causes traffic tickets really badly. <laughs> this was, I think, the most beautiful. This is my favorite. This, to me, is the archetypical American uh, Italian sports car. It was designed to make it look like it goes fast, and they were great cars, and today they're still as beautiful, in my opinion. They're iconic and as beautiful today as they ever were. Um, next, we're gonna move to f France, <laughs> um, and this is the French equivalent of the Volkswagen Bug. This was the French everyman's car, but as you can see, it was designed by the French. <laughs> Why do I say that? Well, they took all sorts of pieces and they put them together, and somehow they hold together. Um, we're walking into the Art Deco. Um, I just I discovered a thing called the Mullen Museum. If you're online, you want to see something great, um, go to the Mullen Museum in Oxnard, California. It's built in an, in an Art Deco building, and he's got all these fabulous Art Deco cars from the 30s. Most of them were French. This one here is a cheat. Now we're back to, to France. The rest of them are all French cars during the Art Deco period when these bodies were handmade. They would buy a, a chassis from one uh, manufacturer and then they would make a car that was in a style that they thought would be worth driving in. And um, there's a group of them coming here that just, they're, they're just absolutely stunningly gorgeous. And seeing them in person is, is just, if these are not sculpture, then I don't know what is. Um, they're, they're fabulous pieces of, of history that were developed during an Art Deco period that they brought that same thought about how they put lines together, how they put uh, pieces together, and how they make it work in a car. Um, most of you, I assume so many of you have heard of Bugattis. Um, there's a new one out that has none of this character, none of this class, um, but it'll go zero to 60 in 1.1 seconds, um, and it'll drive at 250 miles an hour. Um, this is, is the last of the, of the Art Deco period. Again, I really want to, if you like these cars and you're curious, check out the Mullen Museum out in Oxnard, California. And as you travel around, pay attention to the cars that you're seeing. There are some really spectacular cars out there today, and in my opinion, they are art.